Now let's discuss very important theorem, remainder theorem. Now what's this remainder theorem is about? Previously, what we did, we were dividing with the help of long division algorithm. Then we were finding the remainder that what's the remainder? Is it 8? Is it 0? Or is it 2? Right? Now, how is it? You can, you can just imagine that suppose if we can get the remainder without doing division, that is what remainder theorem is about. Right? So first of all, let's understand. Suppose we have polynomial px and we want to divide by x minus a. This is one another polynomial that we want to divide with. And if you want to get the remainder, in this case, remainder that will be p of a. Okay, this is very like confusing at some point. Let me explain. You have polynomial right and you have the another polynomial you are dividing with so x minus a this number you substitute into the polynomial and whatever answer you get that will be the remainder very simple like value of the polynomial but that value how you are supposed to take it from the another polynomial that's given in the question right it's simple you have one polynomial divide with another small polynomial with the lesser degree of polynomial. So if you want to get the remainder, substitute that value of a into the polynomial, whatever is the answer will be your remainder, right? So this is all remainder theorem is about. Now let's do one question to understand this theorem. Let's start. Using remainder theorem, find the remainder when this polynomial is divided by another polynomial. So we have degree of polynomial 4 over here. So let's start. So first of all, let's write p of x, that is x raised to 4 minus 3x cube, then plus 2x square plus x plus 1. And by what polynomial we are dividing? x minus 2. So divide by x minus 2. Now, it's very important to get the value of this a. How to get the value of this a? That is also important. Remember, simple, it's very simple it is. So what we need to do, whatever we are dividing with, take is equal to 0. Like x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to what? 2. Now, this is our value of a. You can imagine, consider, compare with the remainder theorem. This is the value of our a, that is 2. Now, what we need to do, we just need to find the PA. In this case, it is P2. So let's start with that P2. So here, let's write P2. So wherever we see X in the polynomial, we are supposed to replace with what number? 2. So let's start here, X raised to 4. So we will write 2 raised to 4. Then minus 3 raised 3 into X raised to 3. So 2 raised to 3 plus 2 into x square so here it is 2 square plus 2 plus 1 simple now 2 raised to 4 is 16 minus 2 cube is 8 8 3 is a 24 plus here 2 square is 4 into 2 that's 8 plus 2 plus 1 is here what can we write that is 3 so here 16 minus 24 that is what minus 8 here plus 8 then plus 3 so minus 8 plus 8 we can do cancel and the answer is 3 so this is how we get the remainder so let's repeat the steps what we did remainder theorem is about px divided by some another polynomial so what you need to do just find the pa that will be the remainder so we have the px over here we have another polynomial that we are dividing with now you need to find the value of a so for that another polynomial you need to equate to zero so we'll get the value of x now that same number you need to substitute into the polynomial so we substitute we find the value of p2 we substitute and get the uh, you need to do the simplification and get the answer 
So in this case, remainder is 3. Remember what is the advantage of this theorem? We are not supposed to do that long division and then we need to find the remainder. Here, just we need to simplify further, we need to get the value of A, substitute into the polynomial. We have already know how to find the value of polynomial. That only we need to do it. But that value also we need to find it. So this is how we solve the sums related to remainder theorem. Let's move to the next question. Let's discuss few more questions about the remainder theorem. Let's start. Find the remainder in the following cases. So we have two cases, we need to find the remainder here. Remember, if it is not mentioned that with the help of remainder theorem or by actual division, always prefer to do remainder theorem. That's very easy to do. If you want to go ahead with that actual division with the power x raised to 21, that will be that will be quite adventurous, right? Because 21 means you are going to have 21 terms actually there, right? Or 20 at a point, right? So prefer to have good habit of remainder theorem. Let's start. So here, this x raised to 21 is being the x raised to 20 divided by x plus 1, right? So in this case, first of all, we need to get the value of a, right? If you remember the remainder theorem, we were finding the p a. Now, a, how can we get from the divisor? So we are going to equate divisor as 0. So we will take x plus 1 is equal to 0. So what's the value of x? x is equal to minus 1. Very simple. Now this value we are going to substitute into the polynomial and whatever we get 0 or some numbers positive or negative that will be the remainder. Let's start. So we will find kind of value of polynomial. So wherever we see the polynomial we are going to replace with minus 1. So here minus 1 raised to 21 and here in subtraction that is 20 very simple now 1 raised to any number remains as it is 1 raised to any number remains as it is right because 1 multiplied by 1 how many times even if you multiply answer is going to remain 1 only but here we have minus 1 now for minus 1 remember one very simple trick right if it is odd power then answer will be minus 1. If it is even power, answer will be positive 1. Here, minus 1 raised to odd power is there. So what will be the answer in this case? That's minus 1 and minus 20 as it is. So if you simplify, the answer is minus 21. Very simple to do. If you try to do with the actual division, that will be the very long term and you won't be able to get the answer that's sure right and here we can get remainder with the few steps only around five steps i believe we get the remainder in this case for one mark you can expect this very small question but the numbers are big just to confuse you at a point but keep in mind minus one raised to even let's write here minus one raised to even power means it is one and minus one raised to odd power it is minus 1 right this is the property you need to have in mind right simple now let's go on to the next question x raised to 51 plus 51 divided by x plus 1 again here divisor is same like the previous case so though let's do the calculation let's equate divisor 0 x plus 1 is equal to 0 so x is equal to minus 1 is the value that we need to at the point we need to find the value of the polynomial so let's start here we will write p minus 1 so here x raised to 51 so minus 1 raised to 51 and here plus 51 as well okay see minus 1 raised to 51 i told you in case of minus 1 you just need to identify even number or odd number Whatever is the number, 10,000 number, 1 lakh and 1, it doesn't matter to us, right? Just identify even and odd, you can get the answer very quickly. So, here it is odd, 51 is odd number. So, what will be the answer? Here, minus 1. So, minus 1 plus 51. Now, opposite sign, so we are going to subtract, that is 50 is the answer. 
so 50 will be remainder in this case and minus 21 will be remainder in this case very simple you equate divisor as the 0 here and here as well in both cases we have minus 1 then substitute that value of x into the polynomial simplify in the correct way and get your remainder let's discuss next question let's discuss two more question in the same topic let's start with this one x cube minus a x square plus x divided by x minus a this is the polynomial and this is another polynomial that we are dividing with now we are going to first of all equate divisor as the zero then substitute the value over here and let's see what do we get it so let's start here first we'll start x minus a is equal to zero let's shift over here so x is equal to a is the value of x now we are going to substitute this value into this polynomial let's say here p a and wherever we see x we are going to replace with a so x cube so i can write a cube minus a into x square is there so what will i write a square plus instead of x a will be there so a cube a into a that's minus a cube plus a so see this positive a cube and negative a cube will be cancelled and what's left only a so that's the remainder in this case right very simple the method is same we are equating zero substitute the value in the polynomial whatever you get that will be your remainder let's discuss one more question so this is the two polynomials over here right let's start with the divisor equate to zero x minus three is equal to zero let's shift over there so x is equal to three this is the value of x we are going to substitute into the polynomial so let's start with that p3 so we can write 4 into x cube so 3 cube then plus 8 into 3 square then minus 17 into 3 and plus 10 it is simple so 4 into 3 cube is 27 plus 8 into 3 square is 9 and 17 into 3 is 51 plus 10 let's start here 4 into 27 that is 108 here 8 nines are 72 and let's simplify this to guys that's minus 41 here if we add them up that's 180 minus 41 so what we will get 139 as the remainder very simple to do right method is going to remain same here we were not having any value but as some number like unknown number a over here so substitute no worries just follow the method this is to confuse you if you don't see the number you get confused at how to do that but just try to substitute you will get an idea this is very simple case here we have the cubic polynomial right you get the value of x by equating divisor as the zero substitute and get the answer so this is the very simple topic of finding the remainder let's do variations of this questions